Welcome to my chambers. Earlier this week, the FBI released 300 more emails from the investigation of Hillary Clinton's misuse of emails while she was Secretary of State. Sounds like it's old news, but it's new. These emails were taken from the server of a non-government person to whom Mrs. Clinton sent them, and they all contained confidential or secret material, material the United States government wants to keep secret and that Mrs. Clinton swore an oath to keep secret. The person to whom she sent them was hacked by Russian and Chinese and Israeli intelligence agents, demonstrating conclusively that the secrets that Mrs. Clinton swore an oath to retain, she in fact exposed to foreign governments, at least two of which are hostile to the United States of America. This changed is substantially the case against her, which was dismissed by the FBI in July, reopened by the FBI in October, dismissed again by the FBI in late October, and now probably will be opened again. Why will it be opened again? Well, one of the measurements that the government uses before it decides to prosecute is, has the person that we think we want to prosecute caused any harm? During the campaign, Donald Trump argued aggressively that Mrs. Clinton exposed secrets to foreign and hostile powers. FBI agents who were not pleased with their director's decision not to seek Mrs. Clinton's indictment made the same argument. Mrs. Clinton denied it emphatically. We now have proof that Donald Trump was correct and that the complaining FBI agents were correct and that in fact American state secrets were exposed and to and received by Russian and Chinese intelligence agents who wish us harm and Israeli intelligence agents who wish us good, so-called friendly hackers, because of the gross negligence of Mrs. Clinton. This ramps up the case for her prosecution. In fact, when Senator Jeff Sessions, whom President-elect Trump has nominated to be Attorney General, was asked about this at his confirmation hearing earlier this week, he said, I am going to recuse myself from any further involvement with Mrs. Clinton, particularly with respect to the emails, because while I was a senator, I was harshly critical of her. That is telegraphing to the legal and judicial and law enforcement communities, the investigation will be reopened again because the case for prosecuting Mrs. Clinton is now stronger than ever. Welcome to my channel. Attorney Lisa Bloom is now under fire after reportedly offering money to women willing to accuse the president of prior harassment. At the very least, Bloom engaged in a perverse kind of financial incentive to attract accusers, truth being a perhaps secondary consideration. Now Bloom is going on the attack, smearing the reporter who broke the story, John Solomon of The Hill, calling him a far-right journalist. In reality, John has broken many important stories this year. He joins us now with his side of the story. John, you far-right journalist. How used about to work that? for the AP. That's you right. Stories about rape in the Congo all I those did. years ago. I mean, you That's won right. awards and so forth. But uh, by the way, I had a, I, in law school, I had a um, license plate on my Honda Civic that okay. said far-right. So does that, on my part... <laughs> You clearly, <laughs> clearly are, yeah. Far right on it. Everyone thought it was very funny. So uh, she's, she's on the attack, saying yeah. that you're distorting uh, what really happened. It's not fair. Uh, what's your reaction? Uh, you know, I, I learned a long time ago. I've been an investigative reporter for 30 years. If you can't attack the facts, you try to do an ad hominem attack on the reporter. The facts are unassailable. And it is true that uh, though she says she wrote, represented women pro bono, she had a nice way of collecting a 33% commission by selling their stories to the tabloids. It's unassailable that she arranged for donors, possibly related to the uh, election, uh, to pay these women money. Uh, and, uh, and I think uh, the women, at least one of the women, described a lot of pressure she felt as the election day got nearer for her to try to come out and, and make these allegations against Trump. Those are things that are not in dispute. This is what uh, Lisa Bloom told Joy Reid over the weekend. Let's watch. Donors reached out to us and said, my God, what can we do to help her or other women come forward? They're in fear. Uh, you know, we have this very unequal playing field here. And we discussed arranging for security and relocation services for any women who wanted it. I want to be very clear. Neither Hillary Clinton nor anyone from her campaign was associated with any of those offers uh, for relocation and security. 
John, no one from the campaign, Hillary, didn't know anything about it. What little factoids should she leave out in that? Well, moment? one of them is she will not answer whether she talked to the Clinton super PACs, which is where the real big money is in the election, right? The candidates are capped at $2,400. Super PACs can take a lot yeah. more money. She will not answer the question. I've asked it 100 times. Can't get an answer out of her. She also didn't talk about that little mortgage payment yeah. for that house in Queens let's, that let's Ms. Go through Hart some of the things. needed. Yeah, one of the women got offered $750,000. You could buy the Secret Service detail for that. You don't need that much protection. And there was other things going on. The woman said one of them wanted their mortgage to get paid. The other woman said, I want my college tuition for my kids paid. It was a lot more than security. I want to read an email, a story that you broke tonight on That's the right. Hill from Jill Harth, the New York makeup artist who right. accused President Trump in a, in a suit she ultimately dropped in 1997, That's alleging right. some type of misconduct. This is what she wrote. She uh, wrote to uh, Trump's assistant, Rona Graff. I also want to put it out there that I would be willing to say at a rally or somewhere uh, or somewhere how Trump helped me with my self-confidence and all positive things about he is with women to counter any potential negativity that may come out at some point in the campaign. Now, this is from a woman who... Suppose it was going to come out and it came out and said, well, he mistreated me, but in between her two broke me or something like that, that she... Um. In between her two accusations, there's a much greater context to this email. She wanted a job with the uh, Trump campaign. She asked to be his campaign makeup artist. Whoa, 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 whoa. Someone gropes you. You actually file a suit that you ultimately drop, right. but you obviously can't like him, alleg allegedly right. did this. Then she wants to work in the campaign Not as, only the campaign, that, as a, a makeup artist? More than that, she wanted him to be the pitch man for her new cosmetic product. Oh, anything else? No, that's it. Those are the two things that uh, what was came it, up. Man, in. What was it, Manscara? Uh, it was called... Uh, what, was it, what, did, what was Donald Trump going to have, like, mascara on? What was he possibly going to put on Yeah, his face? it was a whole uh, male uh, beauty product uh, line. Wait, so she, <laughs> she wanted him to do, what, do infomercials for her? Like uh, well, some sort of pitch man work, yeah, absolutely, yeah. But she, she came out and said tonight that... Oh, it, I, I had gotten over the yeah. prior, but she was mad that Donald Trump said it didn't happen. That's right. It's so, so she oh, went, my, this is ridiculous. Uh, if you follow her story, she was angry at him, <laughs> then not angry at him. Do my makeup line. Uh, work, I don't like you. Yeah, work on a business deal. And they got angry at him again when he denied the allegations. Now, uh, Lisa Bloom said that none of this changes the fact that she did not tell women to make up stories. That's right. And that you, you wrote that in your I original did. piece. Yeah, none of the women said they were asked to say anything. No. Now, there was one episode that is kind of interesting. One woman was asked to take all of her pro-Trump comments down from Facebook so that her story would be more believable. So that did happen. Oh, OK. But they, she, they weren't told, you say no. this and I'll give you extra no, money. No, not at all. Well, it's so good to talk to a far-right journalist tonight <laughs> and all of, all of your credentials it's, uh, over there. It's a weird feeling sound to me. Yeah. All right. John, it's always great to see you. Thanks, Thanks so Laura. much. Appreciate it. The last couple of weeks have raised a number of legitimate questions about special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation into Russian collusion. A number of members of the investigative team over there have been exposed as intense Democratic partisans. Now, President Trump's lawyers have accused Mueller's team of improperly seizing transition emails without bothering to supply a warrant or even a subpoena. They just took them. Mark Stein is an author and columnist, and he joins us now to put this in perspective. Um, Mark, can you just take things? Well, apparently you can if you're a so-called uh, independent counsel. I mean, I, I should come the unassimilated foreigner with you here, Tucker, and say that I don't think there should be a two-and-a-half-month transition between governments, which is unique uh, to the United States in the developed world. Um, and, in, and it makes no difference anyway, because the Democrats in the Senate slow walk everything. So here we are a year later, and all the deputy assistant, assistant deputy undersecretaries at every department are still all the Obama guys anyway. So if it's meant to give you time to staff the departments, it's a waste of time. But in this case, it's particularly relevant because the transition was used by the outgoing administration uh, and the permanent bureaucracy to set up their destabilization of the incoming administration, the Trump administration. And I see no reason at all why a guy who is supposed to be investigating uh, Russian interference in an election that took place on November the 8th should be able to seize uh, effectively an incoming government's entire uh, confidential communications uh, between each other uh, in the period after the election took place. That seems to me entirely unwarranted by Mueller. You're aware that by saying that you're putting this nation at risk. I, I was watching MSNBC this morning and learned that those who raise questions 
about the Mueller investigation are, this is almost a quote, inciting violence in the streets, delegitimizing the U.S. government, maybe precipitating a coup. I mean, do you feel uncomfortable with your criticism because it's wrong to criticize the government? <laughs> Uh, no, because it, it, it's Mueller and the whole ca independent council that is designed to delegitimize the institutions of government, starting with the president. By the way, while we're at it, Mueller is the last guy on the planet who should be an independent council because he's not independent of everything, anything. He used to work uh, for Paul Manafort's uh, law, former law firm. He's connected with everybody. Ever since he was appointed, for the last six months, I've sat and watched... Uh, uh, Fox, and I watched MSNBC, and watched uh, uh, CNN, and all the others, and an endless parade of Beltway insiders saying, well, I've known uh, Bob Mueller since 1972, and you couldn't find a straighter arrow. He's an Eagle <laughs> Scout. He's a, and that's exactly why, whether or not that's true, that's exactly why he shouldn't be independent counsel. He's not independent. He's the insider's insider. Uh, but 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 just to, just to go go back to that point about destabilizing uh, everything uh, everything here, Tucker. If you take MSNBC at their word that this guy is a straight shooter doing a credible job, for it to carry conviction, if you're going to investigate the guy who won uh, the election according to the rules of the election, you better be seen to do it in as clean. Uh, a exactly. way as possible. You don't do it by appointing psychologically weird people uh, who think they're somehow uh, top super secret agents uh, who've been put on earth to save the republic like this struck guy. You don't do it by uh, involving people uh, whose wives work for uh, Hillary Clinton's OPPO research team. You don't do it by hiring people who went to Hillary Clinton's uh, non-victory party on November the 8th. Not everything that Mueller has done discredits his own uh, reputation and discredits his own investigation. So by my count, you've got nine out of 15 investigators so far having donated to Democratic politicians, to the Clintons. Now, I've got pretty strong political views, very strong. I talk about them every night on TV. I've never donated a single dollar to any politician right. because my views aren't strong enough to warrant right. a donation. So if you've got people who are so spun up about politics, they're giving money to specific candidates, investigating a guy on the other side, why shouldn't that at least raise the question, what the hell is going on? Well, exactly, because look, look at it this way. Mueller can't win now. Uh, in fact, the country can't. That, the tragedy well, is that right. the country can't win. Uh, let's say that Mueller finds Trump guilty of something. Half the country, the, the half of the country that voted for Trump, is going to say, this is ridiculous. A bunch of people who were Hillary donors, who went to Hillary's parties, who worked for Hillary's oppo research uh, team, uh, who were having uh, Hillary, Hi Hillary fans who were having illicit affairs uh, because they loved Hillary so much, it turned them on so much. Uh, as you pointed out, uh, th those, those, those tweets and texts between uh, Strzok and his lover, uh, you know, it sounds like John le Carre rewritten by Teen Beat. It's completely preposterous. Um, but the half of the country that voted for Trump won't accept a verdict against him. Likewise, the other half will not accept... Uh, if, if Mueller exonerates Trump, they'll say, oh, well, that's just because uh, the Republicans demonized him and trashed him. Mueller's killed the whole point of this investigation. You're exactly right. The whole point of independent counsel investigations is to reassure Absolutely. us it's on the level. Mark, thank you for that, as always. Thanks a lot, Tucker. Sorry I got worked up about it. <laughs> I love it.